What's up guys, welcome to another video. This one's going to be outlining direct fuel injection, construction and function, and um, the failures that can occur. Uh, I recently got a 2020 RDX into the shop with uh, multiple warning lights on, a loss of power, extended crank, and a whole myriad of issues due to a failure in the direct fuel injection high pressure pump, which is this component right here. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the shop and we're going to start the repair and just outline everything that's been done. Uh, towards the end of the video, I'll go ahead and do a breakdown of all the components um, in the direct fuel injection system as well as the uh, complete operation of it and how it really works. So uh, yeah, let's get to the shop and start working. Okay, so this is the subject vehicle, uh, 2020 Acura RDX. Um, as you can see, it has extended crank, multiple warning lights, eliminated on the dash, and when you rev the engine, there's a very heavy lag and there's a loss of power when you actually take this thing out on the street and drive it. So what I do is I generally check the um, low pressure pump fuel pressure, which I'm doing right now, and I'm verifying that it's within target parameter, which it is. This just verifies that the uh, low pressure fuel pump that's in the fuel tank is up to standard. These are the components that need to be removed to uh, access and remove the DFI pump. I determined at this point after fuel pressure testing that the DFI pump was um, the faulty component that needed to be replaced. And so here we are uh, getting everything torn down and removed. That right there is the main banjo fitting that connects the high pressure pump to the fuel rail. And this connection point back here is what connects the low pressure pump to the high pressure pump. Two Allen head sockets, uh, head cap screws get removed. I believe that's a number, number six Allen head socket. Speeding things up just a bit. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a, a pain to get out, but because of that o-ring right there it's kind of tight around the bore and this thing is the that i'm removing right now is the rocker um, roller rocker assembly that rides on the camshaft this reduces the amount of friction that um, on the surface of the uh, the bearing right there. Similar to a roller rocker on a, a cam, camshaft. And as you can see, it just kind of slips on there. And as the cam moves up and down, it pushes that spring, that heavy duty spring up and down. And that's what produces the high pressure. So the camshaft that powers this thing is the intake cam and at the very end of it there's a triangular lobe that pushes that uh, DFI pump up and down. Here um, prior to install we have to make sure that the cam lobe is on the flat portion of it and so what we're looking at is a, an inspection mirror to just make sure that it's completely flat to make the preload of the spring as um, a proper and as low as possible. Going back together with a new one, we reuse that uh, old roller rocker and simply just insert the new pump.
and then we should be able to just bolt everything down. Just kind of walk it in. And then we'll cinch it down and then torque it. Don't quote me on this, but I believe the proper torque is uh, 18 pound foot. And here we are back in the car. I like to prime the fuel system to get everything pressurized before I crank it. And then I'll go out back to the engine compartment to make sure that there's no fuel leaks by visual inspection and um, I'll actually sniff to make sure that there's no odors of fuel and then I'll go ahead and crank it up as you can see the extended crank is gone no more check engine lights no more warning lights and um, that lag when you rev the engine is now gone So let's get back to the, uh, the lab and then we'll break everything down. And Okay, so uh, let's go over um, all the components in the direct fuel injection system. I have a very crude and simple uh, diagram I drew out here of the mechanical portion of everything. Basically we have your fuel tank unit, otherwise known as a low pressure fuel pump, which is this thing. It sits submerged in fuel at all times in the fuel tank and it's a 12 volt uh, DC motor that pumps fuel and supplies the high pressure pump, which is this component right here, with fuel to convert it to high pressure fuel. Um, obviously, as we saw in the video and as it was explained, it is driven mechanically by the intake camshaft. There's a triangular, triangular lobe at the end of the camshaft which drives this high, um, heavy duty spring up and down and it inside of here within here there's a bunch of diaphragms and relief valves that actually work to um, convert the low pressure fuel to high pressure fuel uh, input from the low pressure side is this portion right here output to the fuel rail which is this portion right here gets connected via metal pipe to the fuel rail this is the fuel rail over here and your four injectors um, this is an example that was pulled from a J35, uh, so there's only three injection ports. Uh, but the vehicle that we worked on obviously is a four-cylinder turbo. Uh, so you could just imagine it appearing in the same fashion with one extra uh, injector port. At the end of the rail, we have our, our fuel rail pressure sensor, which is this component right here. And that basically monitors and reports the, the rail pressure to the PCM. Um, on the diagram, this is where I had it teed into the fuel pressure gauge uh, to test the low pressure output. Uh, target parameter for that is about 70 PSI as we saw it, it reached that immediately as soon as you prime the, the engine and started cranking. That's how I determined that okay well the low pressure pump is okay and the reason why we're getting all these codes uh, P0087 fuel pressure too low specifically is because of the high pressure pump. Um, there are a few other components that could cause this, but um, I determined it to be the high pressure pump. Um, anyway, um, so going diving deeper into this uh, high pressure pump, uh, there's an electrical um, connector right here, and a lot of people might be asking, okay, what is that? That is the solenoid, which um, is controlled by the vehicles PCM that's the powertrain control module and what this does is it actually allows this to have a variable pressure this controls the diaphragms and the relief valves within this uh, based on engine load and and driving parameter and everything so the PCM will actually take input from the uh, fuel rail pressure sensor and based on the input that this thing is seeing 
and you know it could be dependent on temperature it could be dependent on load it could be dependent on a whole bunch of other things but the, the, the PCM will then do uh, calculation and then it'll send an output to this solenoid right here which will then control the diaphragms and relief valves inside of this high pressure pump and thus we're not getting a steady static you know, high pressure at all times because the engine doesn't doesn't need super high pressure at say idle well when compared to like a full red line wide open throttle so um, I'm gonna go ahead and do another diagram to show this is again this is the mechanical portion of, of how everything works but there is an electrical element to it as well so I'll go ahead and just draw that out and then we'll review that but okay so this is the electrical uh, diagram that I have drawn out uh, please excuse the uh, crudity of it um, but anyway this is the basic construction and function uh, we have your powertrain control module over here, um, which uh, controls the PDM, which is your power distribution module. Power distribution module sends 12 volts uh, direct current to the fuel tank unit, the one that's submerged in the tank. Fuel tank unit is always grounded. Um, and then once that is powered up, then this motor runs and then it supplies low pressure fuel to the high pressure pump, which is this component right here, PCM. Uh, controls the voltage for the high pressure pump solenoid to control fuel pressure uh, by monitoring the input that the fuel rail pressure sensor, this component right here, the three pin, is reporting to the PCM. It's a five volt sensor similar to like a MAP sensor or um, uh, something like that. The PCM supplies five volts to it, uh, supplies ground to it, and then based on the rail pressure in here, there's a resistance change which will vary the input voltage to the PCM. So as the pressure increases or decreases, then the um, there's going to be a resistance change. Obviously, voltage is going to go up and down, and based on that voltage reading, the PCM will then know, okay, well, this is how much pressure I'm seeing or the rail is seeing, I need to adjust the solenoid in the high pressure pump. But that's basically how it's laid out. So I um, hope this simplifies things, but if not, then we have at least a little bit of a better idea of how direct fuel injection uh, works both mechanically and electrically. But um, this is a basic breakdown of uh, high pressure um, fuel delivery and uh, the main components to it. Obviously. Okay, so in closing, um, let's go over some other factors that could cause PO087, which is the DTC that we had, low fuel pressure. Um, obviously, uh, in the video, the component that was deemed to be the failure was a high pressure pump, but some other components that could cause the same DTC are outlined as uh, we see over here. Obviously, one of them being the low pressure pump. You have to test it to figure it out. High pressure pump, obviously, that was the culprit. PDM, uh, power distribution module, but in that case, the vehicle would likely not run at all. Um, damaged cam lobe, so if the cam lobe that drives this spring up and down is damaged, then obviously this won't be working at its full potential. That could cause low fuel pressure. PGM uh, relay one and two, again, if that were the case, then it would likely not run at all. Fuel injector relay, um, I've seen these go bad and then what happens usually is the engine will run and it'll stall randomly and then um, the PCM will then record low fuel pressure codes. Uh, PCM could be a culprit but then again if the PCM is bad then the car likely will not run at all um, or damaged or leaking components such as fuel supply pipes or uh, damaged lines, things of that nature. Um, I hope this is, uh, video has helped to clarify a few things on uh, high pressure pump, low pressure pumps, direct fuel injection, all that type of good stuff. But um, basically just uh, go ahead and just start testing and process of elimination to find out what the cause is so that you can um, ultimately fix it right the first time and not parts cannon cars. Uh, until the next one, thanks for watching. See you then.